everybody. Welcome back to your favorite podcast, Story Dive. The only one you should be listening to besides the other ones that you like listening to. We're, yeah. we're pretty high contender, actually, I would say. Uh, so, yeah. yes, welcome to Story Dive. This is uh, us. We are you, your hosts on this adventure today on yeah. the story you're about to mark on. My name is Kai. This is my co-host, Logan. Hello, I'm me. At least, I think I am. It felt like you're pretty eager to <laughs> say stuff. Dude, my mind went blank. I was like, I, I'm i I'm Logan. Like, you, you already said I was Logan, so I, I was like, where do I go from here? Like, he already said it. So, <laughs> I'm like, I'm just me. You know? uh. He's just him, then I am just me, and you're just you, and we like that. Yes. Thank you for being here. Thank Seriously, you. truly, we appreciate it. Wait, me or the listeners? So, uh, both. I mean, you have to be here, but... I don't have to be here. I, I, guess can, I, can, just, I can just leave, you know, and then you're just the lone wolf in the, in the dunes. I could solo act it. It would be depressing. Dude, that and would, our train would crash pretty that would fast because I don't know how to drive a train. That'd be an interesting episode, you know. The, you know, you're giving me ideas actually, so we'll we'll come back to that. Dude, is there a train yeah. simulator? Is that a thing? It has that, to be. That probably has to be a with, thing with, with Euro Truck Simulator and, and Flight Simulator and all that. There has to be. I I swear there has to be. So, in fact, you know what? Is it accurate we, or is we, it a joke? We have the internet, Kai. What are we doing? All right, train simulator. Yeah, it exists. Wow, there's so many of them that exist. There's four? How do you even make four games of this? Game Simulator Classic is what came up for me. It's only um, 25 bucks. That's Oh, you can get the bundle. But this is classic. Oh, there's a winter sale? Yeah, I, there's, you know, I'm realizing that there's a whole train simulator community and part of the world that i wasn't ready for so i'm i'm just gonna exit <laughs> exit that uh tab before we get but, in too uh, deep <laughs> yeah, get, out, get a dive the, out the, our dive, podcast yeah, get out of there <laughs> our podcast is the only train simulator you need in your life all right heck yeah get those other simulators so out of here we might I might look into learning how to drive a train because that sounds kind of interesting actually but like, like in real in life in the meantime no, like a through a sim. I'm not going to drive a real train. Okay. I don't got time for that. But was like, like, what did you, you know? Did people you do flight simulators. <laughs> right, right. But I was like, dude, did Kai's dream of like becoming a conductor just like emerge? You're like, oh, I think I actually really <laughs> no. want to do this. I was, I, I was I all for it. Mostly just was... actually, <laughs> I'm mostly just actually curious on like how you would like because train operators i don't know how many of them like grew up our age how many people our age operate a train i have no clue right i can only assume that not it's not an incredibly high saturated market for 25 right. to 30 year olds well once you okay so because so, you're right like when you're driving a car or when you're driving a plane i mean maybe not I mean, a plane might be more actually similar to a train um but like when you're driving a car or like a lot of other vehicles, you like you have to be really hands on and like pay attention. But like when you drive a train, like what all do you have to do? You like pull some levers, you make sure the train's going good, and then you just like what do you do after that? Like I don't even know. Well, like, I mean, do you, do you but like there? some would say that planes often mostly fly themselves well, to a certain yeah, degree. Yeah, that's what I was saying. There's and like similarities, the pilots but. I don't know. If you ask anybody, like, what's more hands-on, a train or a plane? Like, a, I think the plane's the obvious answer. But maybe I'm stepping yeah, out of line here. Yeah, but you can't play a plane trolley problem. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's not now like I'm interested. someone attached tied to a cloud. Bro, I gotta All download right, well. this train simulator and see how the heck a train <laughs> works now. I just feel like it's a bunch of levers. I feel like that's all it is. Yeah, it it might be way harder than we think it is. Who knows? Maybe uh, it is. Uh, you might be in for more than you bargained for, uh, wow. listeners. But in the meantime, we do have actual like purpose to, to <laughs> what this is. So, so story dive. It's not necessarily about learning uh, about trains, but we do have one. Yes, uh, you hear it every so, single episode. 
you you get to hear the yes, track. Yes, sir. Yeah. That is our one and only analogy train. Doesn't have a name yet. I guess yes. it does. It's an algae train. Getting kind of cramped in here, I'll be honest. Like, my my legs need more space. Cramped with what? Dude, we're, what we're are you the, sitting in? We're on the train. What are you talking about? Sure, but it's just the two of us on the train. <laughs> what, what else is on this train that's taking up all that leg space? Is it the doubloons? Yeah, I'm just, I'm surrounded by doubloons all the time. I'm like sitting in a pile of them and I haven't like stood up in 10 days. So, uh, for, yeah, I, that's rough. I need something to spend my money on, but the train never stops. So I never, I can never spend my money, you know? That's true. Yeah. That's so, rough. That's a rough predicament. It is, but you know, I don't have to kind of worry about that because we have the podcast, um, and there's nothing else that matters, you know? So, yeah. Uh, it's, Speaking of our podcast, uh, we're having a tough time staying on track today. Uh, story dive is all about uh, diving into stories, just like the name suggests. We speak and uh, discuss different types of storing, the uh, ex- storying, different types of stories, storytelling, how to be a story, how to tell a story, how to make a story and how to make it compelling how to sell a story how to get into different industries all that kind of good stuff yes we're we, getting into it every topic you can never think of and you'll, you'll never guess what we're talking about today but before we get into that i believe i have a, a story to share yes this is a new quick little segment we're introducing uh basically we're forcing someone not really forcing we're coercing <laughs> he's greatly. making me do it <laughs> <laughs> with whip in hand. I have no to... choice. We basically want to practice our own storytelling. So we're going to do it here for you guys. Almost not necessarily improv because it's like events that we have pre yeah. preloaded. Well, but like from just using the experience that we've gathered so far, telling good stories. Right. Well, and this is this is uh, it's interesting because, you know, this idea is unfolding before us because like we were just talking about doing this on the podcast and so because i i like i I didn't know uh what necessarily the purpose was behind it but when you explain it like that i'm like dang that's really cool because i was thinking about it as more of like a let's catch up on what we were doing this week but you having the idea of like it doesn't have to necessarily be a story of something necessarily that we went through it could be a story about anything so i kind of like the idea where every week we're going to come with a story whether or not it's a true story up to you um but we're gonna we're gonna give you a small little story about maybe something in our life or something that relates to something we learned um but yeah that'll be cool but i have one right now are you ready to hear it heck yeah logan lay it on me give me slap me with the best story (laughs) you've got i feel like we're hyping it up like a lot um but i'll do my best so i went to california uh the day after new year's and this story is just kind of about how crazy it was getting there. It's not like, it's going to be a short story. I'm essentially just explaining uh, my experience. So, um, you know, I was talking with, going with my mom back and forth. We were going to buy tickets and I ended up landing on a flight uh, that was going to be at 3 a.m. Or actually, it was going to It wasn't be... Southwest, was it? No, no, no. no. So it's, it, I was going to have to go to the air- airport that's like an hour away. and. You know, I'm flying Delta, which Delta's nice, but the flight, uh, Delta. I, like I had no layovers or anything, which is what I wanted, but the flight ended up landing at, s- at 6 a.m. is when they were leaving. And, it, and, it's, and it's an okay. hour away. And usually when you get to the airport, you want to get there an hour before, right? That's a, like, I feel Wait, like weren't you texting me about this? I feel like you were texting me about this. Maybe, the, like, I, maybe I was. Before you were flying out. Maybe I was. Oh, I think you were messaging me. Uh, and so I was, yeah, that's probably how it got brought up. Um, but it was just a crazy night because what happened was I was at home and I'm like, well, I don't normally go to bed till, you know, midnight, one in the morning. And I also am not the kind of person that can just zonk out. I'm kind of a light sleeper. I swear I'm a light sleeper and a heavy sleeper, but like, it's a process for me to get to sleep. I need to like have the right conditions. Mm. I need to be comfortable, right temperature. You know, I need to have a blanket, all this stuff. I have like my whole routine. And so I, I was sitting here like, there's no way I'm going to bed tonight. I'm just going to stay up. So I, 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 I'd woken up at like, you know, what, 10 a.m. that day. And then I'm up all the way 
until 2 a.m. and I'm getting ready to leave and I'm having, uh, because it's so late, I don't have anyone to take me. So I, I, I Ubered to the airport and I've never taken an Uber before. So I was a little stressed out because I'm like, my first time taking an Uber and it's at like three or four in the morning. I'm like, who the heck is up at three or four in the morning? Like, yeah, I'm going to get some the... sketchy guy who's going to like <laughs> take just, me to an like, alleyway and up. say like sayonara, bro. Like, give me your wallet. Like, I don't know. I was worried um, for like no reason. Like, I, I mean, I feel like that's a valid reason. But at the same time, it's like I really didn't have anything to be worried about. Um, so my guy shows up and I leave. At, it's like three. 15 in the morning and I get into his car and I'm like actually stressed. I don't know why, but like, uh, the guy who gave me the ride, like, um, he, 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 I don't know. He he was like an older dude. And like, you know, if he ever listens to this, like he was an awesome driver. Okay. But I, for some reason when I got in, I, and I, as soon as we started going, I like, I had this sinking feeling in my stomach. I was like, Oh crap, dude! I just like made the wrong decision or something. Like I am, I just screwed myself or something. Like this guy might be the end of me, you know. And I, it was just like this irrational fear that just like came over me completely. Um, and he started, you know, asking me about things. Like he was a very nice, talkable dude. He was really interested in my life. I started talking to him about like all my problems and things I was stressed about and all my insecurities. And like, we got into this deep talk and before you know it, I was there because there was no traffic. Um, and it was really nice. And I was like, Oh man, this guy's so cool. And I was feeling pretty good. I go in and the TSA line. Yeah. Okay. It's all like, I, I don't know. This is just my thoughts, but I thought that the TSA line at three in the morning was, or th- it was like four in the morning by the time I got there, like four thirty. I thought it was going to be like pretty small, but no, it was bigger than I've ever seen it. <laughs> It was, it was the Whoa, biggest line ever. Really? Yeah, it was like... How many people are flying at 3 I, in the morning? I know! I'm like, what is going on here? So I had to wait like, you know, over half an hour to get, get through TSA, like just to get to the the part where you put your shoes and stuff in. Which maybe I'm spoiled a little bit because I've, I've been going out of a, a more local airport um, and they are way faster. Like, because it's so small. Uh... But um, anyways... This, this whole experience, right? I get through TSA, I'm walking to my gate and, um, I get there and it's, you know, 4.45 in the morning and my plane doesn't start boarding until like 5.30 and there's literally no one. I'm looking at my gate, the gate across from me, all the surrounding gates, all the stores are closed, all the, no desk, there's nobody, no seat, there's nobody. I'm the only person standing in like, like a 300 foot radius of this like terminal. <laughs> and I'm Sounds like, alarming. I'm like, this is weird. I'm like, this is whack. Um, you know, and then eventually more people did show up, but it was just a really interesting experience going to the airport. First time Ubering, uh, ended up being a really good experience. Got to the airport, like nobody's there, but everybody was in line. Um, and then I, you know, I get on the plane and I, I, it's like one of those things where like, I can't sleep, uh, but I'm tired. Uh-huh. So I'm just like miserable. And I somehow get through the, the, I like, I'm like half asleep, dozing in and out, trying to find a comfortable position to like lean my head on because I'm just like ready to pass out. Um, and I somehow get through the flight, um, and I land and it's like noon in Florida. So I went from it being like, super late to like the days here and I haven't slept at all. Um, and you know, I get picked up by an Uber from a different guy and you know, he's telling me his life story and I'm like, bro, this guy's crazy. You know, like both these guys at Uber, they're like, yeah, I, I do this full time and I do it like every single day for like eight hours, eight to 12 hours. And I'm like, bro, you're nuts. You like live in your car. Um, <laughs> But yeah, he's taking me, you know, and I didn't realize that the convention center I was going to was like 15 minutes from Universal, 15 minutes from Disney. Like, it was a hot spot. And I get there and it's a big, you know, resort, spa, convention center, super nice. Um, And yeah, it was a great time. But uh, I I ended up having to like take a nap as soon as I got there. It's like I slept from like, you know, 
2 p.m. to like 6 p.m. It was like at that point, I'd, nice. I'd been awake for like way too long. Right. But uh, yeah, that was just a crazy experience and I wanted to share it. So it took me like a. That is crazy. I don't think I'd have ever experienced jet lag, but until then. Because after waking up from that nap, I was like, dude, things are not like my chakras are not aligned. Like it was like something was off. My chakras are not aligned, dude. <laughs> so, Something's amiss in the universe. Yeah, I, I've never experienced jet lag before, uh, but that 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 did it. So, anyways, that's nice. well. I'm glad you had a good trip, and uh, listeners, go try standing in the middle of an airport at yeah, three in the morning. I, see, see if you have a similar I, feeling. <laughs> I really don't recommend getting flights. You know, I, I feel like they're called red eye flights or something, where it's just like at the butt crack of dawn, like. I do not recommend it. Like being well rested on a plane. Cause you know, some people are like, I'm going to get my sleep on the plane or whatever. Like some people don't like being on a plane. So they'll like take medicine and zonk out on the plane. That's fine. But I'm like, for someone like me, I actually really enjoy plane rides because I love not, it, it, sounds, it sounds like a weird thing, but I love being in a space where like, I can't really do anything. So like I can just sit there and play games and like, not worry about the rest of my life or the world. It's like, it's like a period of time where I can kind of just like appreciate like just playing games. Like, cause I bring my switch. Sure, yeah. like, like the switch has been a godsend for plane rides. So, um, but it's, so it sucks when I'm tired on a plane. Cause I'm like, I am so tired. I can't play my switch, but I also can't go to sleep. So it's just so terrible. So I really recommend having a better plane ride because like you get your you get your your snacks and your drink and stuff if you fly delta or like i don't know what other plane services do they that, give but... you a biscuit if i remember well dude a i always biscotti. get i get the yeah i get the cookies dude and some ginger ale and i'm playing on my switch and i'm a happy guy like it's honestly like pure happiness so um <laughs> and I, like i get to look outside and i'm like above the clouds like dude i don't know there's some plane rides can be really good so i recommend actually getting sleep before you go um that's just my takeaway from the story is not not great to pull an all-nighter to go to the airport not really not but you know i i made it work yeah nice well thank you for that wonderful story yes i wish i you're welcome uh, yeah i don't think i've ever flown that kind of time period yeah it's bad so yeah it's, it's new it's different yeah and first class was like, well wow, hopefully wow. you're uh what you flew first class? No, I'm just saying that like getting first class is way too expensive, but that would be the only way I'd be able to sleep on a plane. So, uh, I get you. Okay, anyways, like, sorry. not not to do that. Yeah, right. no. well, well, planes remind me of a controversial topic we're getting to today, <laughs> in absolutely no meaningful way, but it just reminded me that we had a topic. <laughs> so. It's not the one you ladies guys are and gentlemen, about. great listeners. Yeah, you you have no idea, probably what we're talking about. Um, so there was in the year twenty twenty. Don't quote me on this till I look it up. Thanks, Google. Twenty twenty two. There was a not. It's it was a, a pretty controversial year for entertainment. Not that twenty twenty three was any better, but. Uh, 2022 I I featured a very specific. Uh, maybe, I it had it had a lot more gems. That's for sure. Yeah, I I, I, just uh, feel, I feel like we're on the up and up. Is all I'm saying. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Yeah. You know. You're you're right. You're <laughs> right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> it depends on I'll how you how you look at I it. See it. Well, uh, as long as I'm part of the up, so then I think we're okay. Now back to the thing. This came out in 2022. It was a set nine episode mm -hmm. series. I can confirm that. It was nine episodes. And it, we are talking about She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, the mm -hmm. new Disney Plus show. I like guess it's not like super, like it's newer. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a modern show, Here's for sure. Modern show featured in a modern world all about she-hulk and her it's a it's a marvel show just for those of you who don't know it it's a show in marvel it's in the mcu and it it features jennifer walters who is a cousin of the hulk 
and she gets blood on her self in a well so yeah she gets blood on herself she also becomes a hulk and it's about her adventures of being the hulk but she's also a lawyer so like mm-hmm. it's it's kind of at least intended to be a courtroom drama yes uh to kind of showcase like what it would be like to run superhero cases in the courtroom like how do you cover the damage and the lawsuits and all that kind of if a superhero gets sued mm-hmm. how what happens so yep. anyway it it covers that nine episode of a sonical and it is the source of a ton of controversy and i mean like a hulking heap of controversy am i right uh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> A uh, She-Hulk, uh, a uh, She-Hulking, a She-Hulking heap of controversy. There are many who say it is uh, okay, and then there are many who say it's pretty good, and then there are many who say it is really bad. Mm. And what we have discovered through our discussion, me and Logan, Logan and I, we have determined that we are actually on opposite sides of the fence on this. Yep. So. Uh, we are going to call this episode the Great She-Hulk Debate <laughs> because <crazy>. I have <laughs> a very severe opinion <laughs> of this show, and it seems like you actually have a really high opinion yeah. of this show. Yeah, I mean, it's not like so. My favorite, in one sentence, sure, but like you're you're one of the only people, at least in my like social circle, that actually enjoyed yeah. or even watched the, watch the show let alone enjoyed it so in one sentence i need your opening like oh, bad. your your uh that's what i'm looking for your verdict what is the verdict of she hulk as a story so my personal opinion i mean that's what this is right um okay yes well, let me let me see <clears throat> this is my first i will i will uh, tell, oh. i will say this the, to all the listeners, sorry, not to interrupt you. This is all purely specu well, not speculative opinion, but just like it is our opinions. And so, if you do disagree with anything that we say, please like shout it to the heavens in the comment section and stuff like that. Yes, I, I like just to preface, I'm not like a first off, I'm not like an avid Marvel connoisseur. Like, I watch a lot of the MCU stuff. I've seen about 90% of it. Like, there's a few I've missed here and there. Because it is, you know, it is hard to keep up with them all, which I know is a criticism of MCU. But I, I've seen a lot of the MCU. I know a lot about Marvel for not reading any of the comics. Um, so that's where I'm coming from with this. I'm not like someone who, like, grew up with the comics and then, you know, watched the MCU and whatever, like, I started as an Iron Man fan when I was 10 years old watching the movie, right? Uh, and I've just been keeping up with the movies ever since because I like long-form storytelling, which I mentioned in the uh, anime episode. Wait, wait, was it was it anime? Yes, yeah, it was, it was. The, that. Yeah. yeah, go watch that if you haven't seen it or listen, whatever the, the term is. But uh, So that's where I'm coming from, and I did... I tried to get as current as I could for this debate. Um, I, you know kind of rewatched the show and also did some research around she hulk in general um i even freaking i even downloaded the marvel app and got the subscription for the comics so i could read all the old she hulk comics okay so i I didn't i I didn't read them all but i I did some research I, i i i did read the first ever she hulk comic and some of the other ones so um Okay. I, I'm, tr- I'm trying. I'm trying to have a broad perspective here, and so my verdict. My verdict is, I think that with everything, everything said and done, She Hulk, it's not the best thing Marvel's ever put out by any means, but it is a very enjoyable show. Very, I think. I think it's very funny at times. It is very interesting, and I. I just, I, I don't know, when I watched the show, it, you know, made my day better, it, uh, like, it was, it was something I was avidly wanting more of, like, when the episode was over, I genuinely wanted the next one, and I was kind of sad when it was over, I was like, I wish there was, like, you know, 10 more episodes of this, um, so, it didn't, like, blow me away, it didn't change my life, but it was definitely, like, a good 
experience and i will i i'm an avid defender of it because i don't think it deserves all the hate it gets even though i do realize it has a lot of problems okay that was a great 15 sentence verdict sorry i <laughs> I, 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 had to, I had to get it all in there i can't <laughs> No, what, yeah. what, what, no, what do you want me to say? Good. I like it. Is that, is that what you want me to say? Uh, sure. Well, yeah, we got it. We got I, the I, there, there was a lot, of, a, a, a lot of commas and semicolons. It was, it was one sentence. Uh, okay, gotcha. A nice long <laughs> yeah. run along train yes. sentence. Okay, perfect. Well, that's, that's excellent. Uh, it's good to know where you're starting from. And I will let you know where I'm starting from. As I've mentioned before, I do think that this is a very severe opinion. Uh, even with people that may not like the show, I feel like maybe I have a very severe opinion on it. But in in my verdict, I my verdict that I'm slamming down, I'm prosecuting <laughs> right now, I think that She-Hulk, attorney at law, is an insult to storytelling. Mm. It is insulting to watch or to try and experience a show like this it is insulting to storytellers all around us and i have i have evidence to back it up uh well not like specifically receipts or anything but i just i ha i also so i'm someone that did grow up with a decent amount of the comics and if i didn't read the comments specifically i did study it and like look into all of the lore and make sure i knew what was happening in the store. So I was well educated in in this. So I'm also familiar decently with She-Hulk's comic uh story, especially the like her origin story yeah. and then just other especially interactions she has with other characters and things like that. So right. That's where I'm at and the this is our topic today. We're going to get into it. Yeah. You're going to try and convince. Well, well if, if I'm nothing gonna else, defend we want it, to try and least. find some common ground. Yeah, I'm going to try and like maybe, you know, give, give it the benefit of the doubt. Like, I, I know I know this show's not perfect. Like, I'm going into this being like, yeah, I, I'm probably going to agree with a lot of the things you say, but I, I just don't. I think that like your opinion on it being an insult is what I'm going to try and try and sway because i don't i think it, it the show definitely deserves to exist and i think that it is a good thing overall so that that's where we differ so let, let's get into it you, you got a first all right know, yep you, you oh i'm ready thing? to rip and to tear <laughs> okay until it is done all I'm right so start, up the, you got. start up the bfg division music <laughs> the doom soundtrack oh, We're, gosh, let's man. tear into this Okay. okay, first point. Right. First first thing here. Um well man, dude, where do I even start? Just pick one. Where man. do I even begin? Okay, Wait, here's the first one. Uh zero character growth. Zero. Mm. I see the Jennifer Walters that starts the show and the Jennifer Walters that ends the show has not learned a single thing, has not changed in any way, shape, or form. She hasn't changed for the better. She hasn't changed for the worst. She literally does not change. The only thing that changes about her in the entire story is that she becomes the uh, She Hulk. The Hulk. Mm, okay. She gets the Hulk, the Gamma stuff. And so, to me, it's it's this. They're almost actively leaning in so heavily to make sure that she did not change in a single inch whatsoever. Okay, so yeah, can I can I counter this? Oh yeah, go ahead. Okay, Let's, sure. Okay, so I I see that because I think character growth is one of the best reasons to like consume any storytelling or media in general. Like character development is very important for storytelling. You are correct, but I I guess my question here is: so how do you feel about you know Western cartoons? Like SpongeBob or The Simpsons or like Fairly Odd Parents or you know what's a current one that I can get for the Zoomers? Uh, I mean, people know SpongeBob. I'm just not in touch with. Yeah, everyone knows SpongeBob. Like, uh, well, like, like, well, no, because Rick and Morty's not even a good example. Like Adventure Time, maybe, but maybe that's not a good example. Um, but you Let's know, go what with I mean? SpongeBob. That's a good. Like Looney Tunes, whatever. Like, like shows 
because because where you're coming from with this invalidates all of those shows that are like episode to episode and they're like kind of like comedy cartoons like kind of they're, they're like, like their main appeal is kind of on humor like i would say spongebob is that way right like for sure the, those episodes their goal is to be witty and funny and maybe have like an intriguing idea and concept but at the end of the at the end of spongebob right like let like i i don't even the show might still be going but like at the end like at the end of like what two or three seasons of the show have the characters grown at all you know was there any character growth because i don't think there was but i don't think that was the point um so i i think i you got to ask yourself if character development was even necessary for the show because this Marvel show wasn't supposed to be a regular Marvel thing. It wasn't supposed to be a super deep and interesting story. It was supposed to be a lighthearted comedy romance law thing. And I think that they nailed it in terms of like being that. But I think you are right. Where she, she did not gain any character. And, I, and like maybe she did a little bit because I mean, uh, I like, to get into something that I like about it, I think that Jennifer Walters is a very interesting character and how people interact with her and seeing how she reacts to situations is one of my favorite parts about watching it because she's a very relatable person. When she's in a situation, a lot of the times, she's kind of awkward and imperfect and she makes a lot of mistakes and it's you know, kind of cringy sometimes, but that's how real life is. And I think it's done in a way where it's really relatable. And, um, you know, by the end of the show, she might not be like impervious to that anymore, but I don't know. I, 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 I was still interested the whole way through. I was never like necessarily wanting her to get over something, you know? Okay. Interesting. Interesting points. Yes. I have, Several rebuttals. Okay, let's, let's hear them. Let's hear them. <laughs> Set up the bullets in the chamber. Here we go. Uh, so, while yes, I can understand trying to take like from the stance that, of you saying it's supposed to be a SpongeBob esque, like just kind of a and a story yet, just kind of to its side, not, not really supposed to influence or interact with. A greater narrative it's just kind of supposed to be its own funny thing the big problem i have with that is that's not what the mcu is at all ever it's never been that way and so and even then you can do that but you need to have plots that don't tie together in the way that they do so in the story throughout the the episodes there are plot points that are supposed to tie into plot points later to make an overarching narrative through the nine episodes. So while yes, I do agree that if it were meant to be each episode is its own like just kind of funny, witty thing, then yeah, it would it it would have done well in that regard, but it didn't do that. What it did instead is it it tried to tell this bigger narrative between the episodes. So there was there was every other character sort of kind of character developed, I guess. Um, and she had different cameos and things in each of the episodes. The problem was there was so much plot to go through, and she didn't change for a single part of it. Now, I should preface this with uh, characters can not change as part of their character arc if it's done well. And I'll tell you like what I mean by this, Captain America as a character, through, especially through the MCU, at least Steve Rogers, was one of those characters where like his his whole arc is is he gonna stop being Mister like Boy Scout? Yes, yes. The, uh, I, my through brother, everything my, that he goes through, my my brother put it well. He was saying that um, with Captain America, he doesn't change, but it, everything around him does, and so it's about like how he handles yeah. that. It's like his story arc is kind of a, a, a reverse of the general way that character growth happens, where his character growth is staying diligent and resilient and resistant to outside forces. No matter how hard they want to change him, he will never stop being the, the Boy Scout, or at least he tries not to, right? And that is actually a really compelling thing. For 
She Hulk's case, I have no idea what, like, why I would cheer for her as a character. Well, so it's it is a bit much to say she has no character growth. I think it is very minimal, but I do think it is there. You know, like there, I think because uh, one of the reasons why I like the show is like as I said, I like her character Jennifer Walters, but. Uh, the, the whole dynamic of the show that really compels me is the fact that like a lot of people like her for She-Hulk, but they don't like her for who she really is. Like, and there's like that whole conflict. And I do feel like as the show goes on, I feel like there is some resolution there. She does have more confidence in She-Hulk as her own identity. And she also has more confidence in herself when she's not She-Hulk. Like instead of it being like these two halves fighting against each other, I think by the end, it feels more of a complete thing. Like she does embrace both sides. Um, and you know, I, I just, cause I, I watched some of the episodes before this podcast and there was the one episode where, um, what's her name? Uh, I'm blanking Titan girl. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Like her rival. Tanya? T- T- Titania. Yeah, I know. That's her name. The episode with her where she like steals her name for her product and, you know, it kind of shows her going through the acceptance where in the beginning she's like, don't call me She-Hulk, that's not my name. And then eventually she, she arrives upon accepting She-Hulk as her name, whether or not she wants it to be. She's like, that's just how it is. I guess I'm just She-Hulk now. And then by the end of the show, I would feel like she'd be proud to be called She-Hulk. So I, that is character development, whether or not you want to admit it. Um, it just doesn't look the same as like other you know, Marvel shows. It's not like, I, I think the big problem is that she doesn't go through something super like challenging. You know what I mean? Like the whole show, I think the ch- more, most challenging thing is just her accepting herself, which I think is interesting. There's even that episode where she goes to the, uh, uh, whatever you call it, like the, the getaway place with all of the, like the villains or whatever that are like going through rehab and like, there's, they're in that yeah, circle, that, and, and they, they literally have, like, a therapy session with her, and it's kind of cool. Like, I don't know. I, I, I want more shows to kind of touch upon that stuff, because uh, I guess to move into maybe a different point, um, I was drawing similarities to, like, One Punch Man, and there are probably some other shows where the show was way less about, like, you know, because m- m- most of the time in Marvel, like, someone will get a power, or they'll, they'll become super powerful, and, like, there's like this world ending thing that they have to struggle with and all that stuff. Like it's usually super big, but like this is like a slice of life show. And it really goes to show like if you have powers, but you just want to live a normal life, like what does that look like? Um, so that's one of the reasons why I really like the show is because it gives you that side that you would never see otherwise. Um, which is why one punch man was kind of interesting is because, Saitama doesn't really care about being strong. He just wants to get good deals at the store and he wants people around him to like him. He wants to be a likable guy. And so it's really interesting to see someone with all this power struggle to do regular things. Um, like they can't even do like the most basic stuff, like get a date. You know, like there's that whole part in Shield where she gets a, a boyfriend and then finds out that it, he, he was just using her the whole time. And like kind of kind of devastating. Sure. So where uh it seems that you see points like in she hulk's favor i actually those are points to me that make it feel less really in uh, cuz yeah well okay. so the, here's what i'll go. say there's a famous writer i wish i could say it i think it was a disney writer or something back in the day that had a specific sentence if you can't tell your story in this sentence and it's not compelling, then you don't have a story. Um, and the sentence is, this character has this desire, but this problem is in the way. So then you have a premise right there. You have a premise for a, for a story. And you're right, slice of lives are a little different in that they don't need to be quite so dramatic in, right. in what the problems are. Yes. But as I tried to answer that question, it was like, She-Hulk has the desire to be a lawyer, but being She-Hulk is in the way, question mark. And the problem I have with that is then she becomes She-Hulk and then becomes a lawyer anyway. 
So it's so yeah. the so the problem is it's hard for me to to kind of well so it's, it's, and then yeah. any other desire you can attach that to any of the desires. Uh, hear me out here. She Hulk has the desire to have a boyfriend. So yeah, I feel like it's a little bit more horny than that, but that's just me. Uh, <laughs> she wants to get a boyfriend, but what's it really in the way? I guess it's like what. Dudes are in the way because they like She Hulk more than her. Well, and maybe, maybe it, the way you're phrasing it makes it sound lesser. Um, because I think it's instead of just saying She Hulk's in the way, it's like what is what is what does She Hulk's problem present itself as? Because I, it's more than just She Hulk's in the way, and more like, you know, obtaining. It's a transformation that changes, you know, how your body works and looks. It changes. How people will perceive you so like if i don't know like it's like having a different perception of yourself versus like your true self like that's the struggle so it's like she wants to be accepted as who she is and a different but more useful transformation is like getting in the way and i feel like that's a more i guess sophisticated and interesting way to look at it than just saying that she holds the problem okay uh well so even if that is the case even if that is the case i still run into the problem of i have no reason to cheer for this character for jennifer walters how rude and mean she is to the people around her is like frustrating for me to watch okay you gotta give me some examples actually okay well, so this ties into one of my big heavy hitters, I okay. guess. All right. I'm ready. I'm ready. So there's a point. This her this speech, this actual this exact speech that I'm about to talk about, when it came out, it was all over the internet and it caused some controversy. Uh -oh. It it was wildly talked about. It's the moment in the very first episode where she becomes She-Hulk. First of all, you've read the comics. You know how the first She-Hulk works. And it's nothing like they did in this show. And I think the way that they did it in the comics is way better. Um, that's a, as an aside. Yes, I yes. just think that it's, it's not part of the main point of what I'm trying to make now. However, I will say... When she wakes up and Hulk, the Hulk, Bruce, is trying to do what he's doing to, to like help her out and help her be the Hulk. He's coming from a specific place and She-Hulk is just insulting him over and over and over and making light of his problems mm -hmm. and making light of his, his suffering. And it, it comes across teasing at first, as in like, oh, they're just cousins that like they do this. And then it starts to get to a point where I'm like, why would you say that to someone? Why would you yeah, say that? Okay. Especially, especially to Hulk. And I'll tell you this, there's the, there's it, it's when they're like meditating and she's making light of it and she's not taking it seriously. And the Hulk kind of is like, this is how you control your anger. And she just kind of goes off on this rant about how, uh, quote unquote, I have to control control my anger infinitely more than you right she says that those exact words come out of her mouth and as soon as i heard that i stopped i this character was dead to me she she killed herself as a character as soon as she said that because it tells me that she is a completely unfeeling towards the hulk and everything that he's gone on through every if you like i I don't even have to get in. I could get into like the actual origins, what the Hulk is as a personality. Like Bruce, right. basically, it's not shown in the movies, but Bruce did go through like abuse growing up, and so that's I can go into that. But even if you just include what we see on screen, uh, Bruce, there's no way, there's no way in the ever living Hulk universe that I would ever ever accept those words that saying jennifer walters by being catcalled on the street and talked down to uh as as a as a woman and stuff like that means is 
means that she has to control her anger infinitely more than Bruce Banner, who's ran from his entire life, basically ostracized from humanity and persecuted and chased and like attempted to be killed to the point where he attempts his own life and he can't even do that because the Hulk is there. You know, when he says, I put a bullet in and the Hulk, the other guy spit it out. Mm -hmm. He's persecuted his whole life. He watches uh, his family ghost him, his, his friends ghost him, and they finally becomes an Avenger and immediately has to go to war and is used. He's targeted by villain after villain. If it's not Loki, then it's Ultron. Ultron targets him. And it's to the point where he himself decides, I am better off not around humans. And he sends himself to the other side of the galaxy where he becomes basically like warrior meat for two years. Is used until Thor comes in and helps him out, right? right? Only for him to come back and lose again because he's targeted by more villains. And he loses not just once, but twice. And then he loses every person that's close to him through the, the snap. And then he loses Natasha. After all of that, after all of that suffering and all of that persecution, all of that loss, you're telling me he has to control his anger infinitely less than Jennifer Walters, who's been the Hulk for less than two days and, like, gets catcalled. You, to me, as soon as she said that, I put zero trust in her character. It was a character assassination to me. Interesting. Okay. That... That was a lot. That was a good. <laughs> that was a good point. Um, I wish I'd watched that first episode again, so I could have that fresh on my mind. But I do remember when I first watched the show that she was bothering me with the way she was treating the Hulk. I remember that. I remember being like, "Like, come on, give him some slack." You know, like, who are you to call him out for this stuff? You know, so. I, I remember feeling that way, but it's so weird to me how I feel like the rest of the show, she doesn't act that way. Uh, at least from, from my recollection. There might be a few moments where you're like, see, she's acting this way. But I, I don't remember any. Um, I remember her kind of, you know, you know, th there are some times where she maybe she was a little selfish, but like I feel like for the most part, she's coming across as like a regular caring human being. Um, who when she's upset i don't know I, that's, I, it's, I, that's i'm so, still trying to think of a time where she like is genuinely invested in the well-being of another person anyway okay i i don't know i don't know if i have any examples off the top of my head either because i don't know being a lawyer and everything like you, you've kind of got me here um but it's weird how I, I i didn't even think about that side of it um but yeah, it's true. Like when, when she does say that, I think it's one thing for her to like say that. And it's another thing for like it to be true. So I, I don't know. I, I still. Well, so here's, here's something, another aside on it. It's like the message that she is saying, I don't necessarily disagree with. Like if that is happening, guys, just don't do that. It's like, that's that simple. Don't be a jerk. Right. It's the context of the narrative of which it is placed and a lot of narrative of She-Hulk is like that. It's just the context in which it's placed makes absolutely no sense to me where I'm taken so far out of the story where I, I heard her say that and I was like, that wasn't Jennifer. That wasn't She-Hulk saying that. That wasn't Jennifer Walters saying that. That was the writers telling us that directly. That because it there's no way there's no possible way that I can even imagine that she would think that like that she would believe that what she just said is yeah, true. Yeah, no, I, I can't. There's yeah. no way. I I can see it. Like now that I think about it, she is a little, maybe not a little, but like she's she's pretty unempathetic. Like the character that is in the show doesn't really like think about other people like she's very self-absorbed um and i think i'm realizing that because she like the only time i can think of in the show where she's genuinely like concerned about someone else 
is when she saves the people in the courtroom and that's what like exposes her to the world um and like that's brought up a bunch of times where she's like i couldn't have just let those people get hurt um but yeah th so that that is that is an example but i i'm also like i do think that like for most of the show like even like she has her friend with her the whole time helping her out he's got the the tailor who makes her her suit there's daredevil who shows up okay i have a problem with her friend as well and daredevil well hold on hold on before before you get into that i was just saying that all these people show up but i don't think she ever really like it's never about them it's always about her so it's like i can see where you're coming from she's very it seems it seems narcissistic but not i don't know not not in the way you would normally think it's kind of like a it's to me i didn't see it at all i was like I, because it was her story i just didn't question that but i i can totally see that side where see. it's like you know she's very cold to other people just by like not like I don't know, but it's it's also something that other people are like. Like, I feel like there are people out there who are like that. Now, whether or not that was that's a good True. thing for like your narrative is a different question. But I right, I kind of watched Which... through the show twice and didn't didn't think about it. So, you know, say what you will. Interesting. Uh, well, to me, to me, the narcissistic behavior and the things that she wants and the way she goes about getting those things are a lot more in line of a villain. To me than than a hero right um that, that is true like i don't see her as a hero but i so i, I also you don't know, know like if... calling it a hero comic or hero story is it's tough for me to believe that when everything she does paints her as more of an unlikable person i almost sometimes cheer at least for me i found myself watching it and wishing that she got a clue or that she she like actually instead of just mocking everyone around her and uh insulting everyone around her and just kind of like being well if you don't like me that's your pro your fault that's your problem and instead that she like did try to get, if she had spent even a moment trying to do uh like let's say she did some volunteer work for people who lost their homes during the the snap in it would speak volumes to her character where even though she's sarcastic and stuff that she still has like an element of i care about the common good i care about the common people and yes you're right there are people that don't really exist there, there are people that are just self-absorbed i'm not cheering for those people i'm not looking at those people like yeah i want to be like them i want to sure, sure. Look, they inspire me so as a show as a and as an MCU kind of brand of show, it does not at all give me inspiration. I, I don't feel inspired. I don't feel interested in this character. I, only, I almost felt like more interested to watch her fail simply so that I could see what she would do about it. And what right. she ended up doing about it at the very end of the story, this is another point, if, if you will. By the end of the story, he, in most, we we talked about the three pillars of storytelling and kind of like the hero's journey, right? Rising conflict, rising action, things start to climax. You're backed into your characters are backed into bigger and bigger corners where they really have to just decide to make a change in the either in themselves or that's you know they they have to change to overcome the situation. And what does she do? She leaves the story and. Yes, it's interesting in a meta way, but she like leaves the story and goes and complains to uh, Kevin, the AI, to change the story, and then he, she gets her life back. Boom! It's it's just solved for her. She it like she blips in back into the story, and she has Daredevil back, and literally falling from the sky to be <laughs> her boyfriend, <laughs> and. Oh, the villain is completely solved off screen. We see zero resolution with that villain whatsoever. Yes. None. Uh, we see no resolution as to where the, what the heck happened with Abomination. We don't know anymore. Uh, it was well, gone. Titania? No, 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 no idea. The, no clue. No, no. The, those all get resolved. 
Um, okay, but they get resolved off screen in a way that tells me that you didn't want to tell a story. The the writers. The writers are telling me that they didn't want to write a story because they didn't. There was no climax. It just ended. And it ended in the worst way possible where I watched She-Hulk complain about her problems and tell Kevin, I don't want it to be like this way. I don't want to fight. And Kevin's like, okay. Even though, even though it is completely against everything that he mentions that he likes shows to be. He yeah. just like decides, yeah, sure, whatever. You'll you'll get your ending. And then it then it ended. There was no resolution. I and this is what I mean by I didn't see her change in any way. I just saw her complain about her problems until someone solved them for her magically. And then a daredevil dropped through the sky and into his into her arms. Yeah. Why would I cheer for a character like that? Well, I, I don't know. It's weird it's weird because you're right. When I watch She-Hulk, I don't watch it for the like that side of it. I don't watch it for which you know, it is interesting to say, right? It's like I think what's interesting to me isn't necessarily uh like her morals or like necessarily like all the characters. It's like I, I like seeing everyone interact with each other and I like seeing kind of how you know like I think the concept of being a Hulk in real life is interesting and how she goes through that is interesting, right? So I, I'm very intrigued when she is faced with these like super menial first uh the first world problems, you know. So I, I sure. know I know what you mean, right? Because I, I what I hear you saying is is She Hulk is kind of going against a lot of what like like a story should be, especially in MCU, like which I feel like that ending the whole purpose of it was to make fun of the fact that like a lot of the Marvel shows have a very similar structure and they all end similarly and blah blah blah. Like let's kind of spin that on its head and um kind of make a joke out of it which i i didn't like i don't take that as like oh marvel's stupid it, it, more of just being self-aware of like what's going on um and my so i my counterpoint to you on that is i really like how he does break the fourth wall and that he did that in the comics and i like how they did bring that in um i feel like there there's there's actually not only one, but there's multiple occasions in the comics. I think it was in the first issue. I don't know if the later ones do this as much. Where she actually, there was one time she was fighting a villain, and in, like instead of beating him, she like literally ripped the the panel that the villain was in and crumpled it up and threw it in a trash can and said, "This is my, this is my book or my 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 story or something." She threw him in the trash can. Um, which totally negated everything about that fight and that character because she said so, and that's how the comic was. Um, so I don't know how much of these problems with her and everything are just from the MCU and how much are taken from the comics because I, I think from what I've read, it was pretty accurate, but I do know that there are some differences. I don't know how... She acts in the comic. I wasn't able to read enough to know, like, if she's necessarily uh, thinking about other people all the time, or if she's kind of just doing her thing, like she does on the show, um, where the world kind of revolves around her. I, I mean, there's so many different takes on her too. Like, when you when you're making a show, like, uh, where you pull inspiration from uh, depends on like a bunch of different things. So I don't I don't know, but I do appreciate that she does break the fourth wall, and I. You know, sometimes it felt a little forced where she would talk to the camera, but there were other times where she would make a comment. Like when she's talking to the AI and she's like, like, he's like, what else do you want? And he's, she's like, when are we getting the X-Men? Like, I, I, I laughed at that. I was like, that's pretty good. Um, so there were, there were a bunch of times where I feel like that, that added to uh, the experience. But I do feel like if you, if, if you go into She-Hulk wanting it to be a meaningful story, I, like it, that's where I think you you fall short. Um, so it's like I I don't know I I, just, I still compare it to those those cartoons where it's like you know this isn't meant to 
have a deeper meaning, you know, like at all. It's just, it's a very surface level thing. And I do understand that MCU, it, because it ties in, it's like, that could be an issue, but like, you know, it, her origin story happened and the show ends with like Hulk coming back and being like, this is my son. Um, but kind of like hinting at Planet Hulk. Did that thing where thing. It, it was like the more important thing about the ending of the story is not actually the ending. It's what's next. Ooh, look at this flashy thing. Look at right, that flashy right. thing. Right, right. But it's like you know, if she sh like my because I I I was talking about this earlier with my brother, but like my concern with She Hulk is I like the show in the context of the show. I don't want. She-Hulk to appear in a later movie, like let's say Secret Wars comes out, and you have She-Hulk, Daredevil, Spider-Man, you know the new Black Panther, whatever. All all the all the people they've built up, Shang Chi, like they all they all get together. Whoever it is, I don't want She-Hulk to be breaking the fourth wall. I don't want her to be making all these jokes and things in a movie like that because I feel like that would take away from it. But I, in the context of She-Hulk, I was totally okay with it, and I thought it was actually like really funny at times so well to your credit i do think it had some humor i definitely view it that's humor level uh on par with like the star wars sequel trilogy mm -hmm. where jokes yeah. are funny for a quick laugh but then after that it's you don't i can't remember a single quotable funny moment in she hulk at much like unto the sequel trilogy where something was genuinely funny enough that was like timeless humor in that in the same way that you've mentioned an aforementioned uh series spongebob is incredibly quotable often it is it is all and the I'm, time I'm, I'm not com i'm not comparing the level of quality necessarily just like the structure like, i want to make that clear i'm not saying she hooks as good as spongebob and and when i say spongebob we all know i'm talking about the the OG Glory Days episodes before it kind of like changed it up, um, which I can't speak for those episodes. So I'm not calling right. I'm not calling new SpongeBob bad, but I am calling old SpongeBob legendary. And She Hulk does not hold a candle to SpongeBob, but I do feel like in, when it comes to the storytelling, it's a very similar structure, and that's what I was getting at. So as it stands, uh. I think it was a very subpar-ish comedy. I think it was a terrible superhero story. I think it was it was awful as a hero story. And then it was also meant to be a courtroom drama. And on that point, I also feel like it fails to give me any kind of compelling drama. It gives me cartoony, like, shut my brain off drama. But if I stop to think about what she did as a lawyer, in any way she is a terrible lawyer terrible i i wouldn't trust her in a courtroom she barely looks for evidence she believes everything on the first account and then goes off on that first account only to be completely wrong by it and have to backtrack and the only reason that she wins some of the court cases is because the story needed her to she got courtroom plot armor um yeah, I, I, I'm not going to disagree with you, especially because Matt Murdock shows up and shows just how incapable she is as a, freaking, as a lawyer. And, and Matt Murdock uses basic rhetoric and basic courtroom skills and yeah. totally wipes the floor with her. Well, it is interesting, right? Because uh, she, she wasn't like a super lawyer before She-Hulk happened. And then once She-Hulk happens, like nobody wants to hire her. It's kind of funny because then once she finally gets hired, they don't even want her for who she is. They want her for She-Hulk. So it is interesting how... Well, sure, yes. Her, her, her status as a lawyer didn't really have anything to do with anything. Um, but she like knew enough well, but, to like... So then why write it as a courtroom drama? Because she's a lawyer. I don't know. Like I think the, the dynamic of having these villains in court was like a big aspect of it. And... Um, I think it was so here's my thing on it. It was it's a She Hulk to me has some interesting premises. But the way that it's executed is so awful, just completely abysmal in the way that it's executed that that's where I found it almost insulting. 
where it, it promised so much when you start. Oh, we're going to get drama and, and villains in court and heroes in court, and it's going to be interesting, and, and, and the cameos are going to be super legendary and stuff. And then it, it turned out to be like none of that. It didn't deliver yeah. on anything. So here's a, here's a point with the, the superhero thing. She-Hulk makes it very clear that she is not a superhero. Like she, yes. she makes it very clear through the first couple of episodes. She never wants to be a hero. I just want to be a lawyer, right? She strays from the heroic arc of using powers for good. Unconventional, potentially. Uh, and if it's done right, it could have like properly subverted expectations. Except we barely see her ex- like succeed as a lawyer. The thing that she said, I am going to completely leave being a hero so I can be a lawyer. And then she's a terrible lawyer. She proves to be incompetent and hardly even looks into the evidence and is is beaten by co- like common practices of a courtroom. So to me, it's like, well, if you're going to lean in to being a lawyer, especially by foregoing the superhero arc of a superhero story, you better be a darn good lawyer because that will subvert my expectations and compel me to be like, okay, well, if you're if you're such a good lawyer that you think you could do that's what you want to do, do it. And if you're good at it or if you're genuine with it, then I will cheer for that because that's her desire to be a lawyer. Right. But then she like complains about all of her cases and she does terrible in all of her cases. And like I said, she gets that courtroom plot armor. So then what is her character then? What is, what is the point of me watching this character? Why should I invest any time into her if she puts no effort into growing and she puts no effort into changing yeah, I you, you know, know what? You know I, what I gotta I feel like I gotta give it up because the way you're explaining it is you know, it all makes a, a lot of sense. And I, I think you're right on like a lot of these points. I know I'm supposed to be debating, and I feel like what I've said is still valid. I still at the end of the day, I still liked the show. I still had a fun time with it. It it definitely was like you know, for like a couple days when I was watching it, it was definitely like a highlight of my day. I liked tuning in and, but you know, I feel like my, my bar is kind of low when it comes to, uh, you know, Marvel stuff. Like I, I don't go in with too much expectations. I just want something that's interesting. Um, and I feel like compared to like some of the stuff I find on YouTube or some of the other options out there, I feel like Marvel even though they're, they might not be delivering the same way they used to, they still deliver stuff that's like, wor- like I think worth watching, um, most of the time at least. I, in my opinion, I, I, I think, I think they they have a level of quality that I I enjoy. So they they, they met that quality for me, but. I wasn't going into that show looking at the story and looking at the character development and everything. That's not why I wanted to watch it in the first place. I just wanted something where I could like turn my brain off and kind of experience something kind of interesting. And, you know, if there's like some funny moments or, you know, inter- like, like characters showing up, like that's cool. Um, I, I really didn't have a lot of expectations going into it. So I feel like I was able to enjoy it. But if you're going in with that lens of like, you know, especially, especially with all the stuff you brought up about like, um, like her character not going anywhere and like he's not really someone that is like she's not really a good role model at all and uh like it it does feel like she's like she's not good at her job and she's not a good role model and she has like a bunch of like you know kind of selfish habits and things so it's like yeah like why should i care about this person um that's a very valid thing and then like the it does feel like the show's kind of like throwing all of these cameos at you to like kind of avert your eyes from like all of that stuff where it's like you know they don't want you to realize like how unlikable she is as a character um so i i get all that and i it, it's you know i think it's all super valid i do think that they they pulled daredevil off really well and i'm not saying that like him getting with her I'm, like i don't have an opinion on that i know that they do uh have a fling in the comics or whatever and i don't know how it happens i don't know if like they well i mean so like like to, to the defense of that situation 
Daredevil sleeps with like every character, so right. he, okay. he he's like if there's anyone more horny than She Hulk, it's probably <laughs> Daredevil. So it kind of makes sense for them to get together, um, at least. So sure, in, but in like it it kind of makes sense. I in that way, yeah, you're right. But, and but, so but, like, but, but I just wanted to say that I do think that I the fact that he showed up and he's the same Daredevil from the Daredevil show, the fact that they got that mustard costume in there uh that I, i've heard a lot of people hate on that that yellow costume um and the fact that like you know the music the the little scene he gets where he does his thing and his theme and it just you know my love for daredevil because daredevil show is like a masterpiece it has like everything that you want she hope to have and more it, but i mean it is a dark show you know it's definitely not lighthearted, but it's it has courtroom scenes that are like really well written and put together. He's a really likable character. Uh, he's someone you want to root for. The show's like got so much good stuff in it when it comes to storytelling. Um, whereas I feel like She-Hulk is, is kind of, it's kind of funny how he's in there because it's like a complete contrast to his show. Sure, yeah. Um, is it weird that through all of this discussion, I actually feel like I've came to another verdict Sounds possibly almost just as severe as, as my other one. Well, what do you mean? Like, if it's just as severe, wouldn't it just be the same thing? Sure, but it's just worded in a different, possibly more severe way. Oh, man. Basically, my new verdict, especially from what you've explaining, I don't want to invalidate any of your points. I just want to make that clear. You actually bring some really good points to the table in, like, what it's meant to be. and what what to expect when consuming that kind of story right the the she hulk spongebob style thing yeah essentially it's like the storytelling equivalent of like reality tv or what's essentially junk food yes uh-huh popcorn flick where the popcorn flick it's it's just kind of there so you can turn your brain off right but she hulk to me even if is my, my verdict even if it's meant to be junk food it's garbage junk food level. It's like garbage level junk food. Because there's so much better junk food out there to consume. Yeah, it's true. I, I, I mean, at this point, I'm not sure what to say. Because, like, I agree with everything you're saying. I agree that it's, it's probably definitely on that level, especially to a lot of people. But, I mean, I still enjoyed it. And I, I watched it today. And I was still enjoying it. And I was like... So it's, yeah. it, I feel like maybe it's just like a guilty pleasure well, <laughs> the situation, sure, but it, it just makes me wonder, like that show does have appealing qualities. It, it does. Um, well, so it, I, does, it, it, it doesn't meet the standards of past Marvel. And it also doesn't really deliver on the future of Marvel. So like it, it does feel out of place, you know, in, in the grand scheme of the MCU. And at the same time, it doesn't do what it does on a high level it's kind of just a thing it's a thing that exists that's like it it's pretty okay and i feel like there are some like i think where it really delivers is just it has a bunch of interesting concepts a bunch of interesting interactions that are really fun to to see but i do think that like uh -huh. if, you're, if you're looking for anything deeper than that there's nothing there in fact what you will find might be upsetting so, right, you know, because we didn't even talk about like the well, the so, budget of the show because uh, you mentioned that to me before. Oh, like, I didn't even mention the budget. The budget yeah. was like an insane we amount. About it but I think that's more of Two, a Marvel 20... problem and less of a She Hulk problem, where Marvel probably sure, has way right. bigger budgets than the product we get. Like that that might and that's a, well, that's a bigger so, thing, I think. Our train is uh, not to kick you off too hard, but our train is reaching the next station we gotta right. make a, a choo choo we gotta make a big pit stop <laughs> uh i will say this before before i end though uh i i'm not trying to come at so yes i do believe it's an insult to storytelling yes i think it's the garbage of garbage junk food but you do bring up a very good point and i will validate this uh, uh, through this next point it does have good a good start to a lot of things, a good premise ish. 
-hmm. So it, it starts a lot of good things, but the way it follows through on basically everything is wrong. Villains, I didn't even get into the villains. I, I can villains? totally get, maybe we'll cover that. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> this is, well, so like, sometimes a story is only good as a villain, right? Isn't that a, I feel like that's a normal thing. Stories yeah, only as good as yeah. villain. The... Either way, if the story has no villain, then, well, what do you do? Well, so, okay, here's, my, here's the thing I was going to say. Because it has decent premises, I have thought about some of them and kind of like thought about how to tell it in a better way. So instead of her going to Kevin and just complaining her problems away, I would have loved it. I actually would have like been interested to watch it through to the end if she testified in court, like as a witness or something about all of these problems. And it's not it's not the magical plot device, the writers that solve all of her problems yes. for her. It's her that goes to the courtroom and t and she can say all of her problems. She could she could be her normal complainy self and say, you know, I hate this. Uh, you know, why can't it be this way? Why can't I just do this and then this and that, this and that? And even if she didn't get everything she wanted, I still would have been like, now that is a really good that supported my expectations i didn't see that coming where mm. she does something about her situation that she has the power to do and she thinks around her problem to yeah. to come to a conclusion that i didn't foresee if it could have done something like that leagues better but since it, it didn't do any yeah, of that i'm with you it like actively it, chose the opposite direction well it, so you know we talked about the pillars of storytelling um, and it just goes to show that like, when you don't have those, it, I think your story does suffer. Like it, when you don't have this, uh, like hero's journey or character growth or whatever, like the story does suffer, you know, like, I think you might gain some laughs and you might gain some, you know, intriguing, like, whoa, what's going on here. But it, at the cost of it, like not having any deeper meaning not, you know, having that, you know, wow moment where you kind of like, 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 I don't know, you know, when, when, when characters go through something hard and they overcome it, like that, that inspiring moment, right? Like the turning point in the story where you're like, wow, like, like, I can't believe this is like what they had to go through and like how they dealt with it and like, whatever. So, you know, it's the sacrifice that they chose to make. Um, but I, I do think that in the long run, it was the it was the wrong decision, you know, in terms of like, I don't know. It, it is weird, right? Because I, you know, I, I like how she breaks the fourth wall and I like I like that side of it. But they, they really leaned into it being such a lighthearted thing, like way too hard because, you know, I don't know. I, I, I agree that like having an MCU and having all these things tied together, like it doesn't it shouldn't stand out so much. It should feel like one of the other Marvel things without you know you know straying so far away from it so right right but yeah it's i don't know you brought, well, you brought a lot of good points to the table um yeah i'm kind of i'm kind of just thinking about them all a lot of good stuff i think you bring up a good point and i think that's an excellent takeaway from this episode because at the end of the day yes we want to debate and like have a good time and so i, I hope i did i don't i really hope i didn't just like destroy Shield forever for you no but, no no no. Um, I, I still i'm still gonna like it after this like i'm just okay, gonna i'm good, gonna i'm good. gonna have that lens on it though where i'm like yeah you know what her character is really just not not great and all that stuff so it, it, it basically does, i have a new lens that i'm looking through now Ah, gotcha. A new lens. Uh, well, so, uh, as you said, I think our great takeaway is the fundamentals are there for a reason in storytelling. Like, there's a reason that they're the fundamentals of storytelling. And so, just, like, you can create any kind of story you want, but to make it more compelling, just stick to those fundamentals and you'll, yeah. you'll do great. Forgetting those yeah. fundamentals brings your story down in yeah. some way and if you want to if you want to watch a show where it's a hero trying to balance his life with his superhero duties uh that's why spider-man exists 
Um, that's why people like him so much because he re he's relatable. And I think that's why I kind right. of kind of like She-Hulk a little bit because there was that relatability. Because I know that she might not care about other people, but the experiences that she goes through personally and the way that like she has to deal with like her personal problems, I, I there are some moments in that show where I, I relate, you know, like something happens to her and she's just a normal person at the end of the day. Even though she has superpowers, she's still a human being. You know, and that's a lot. There's a lot of times when you forget that when you're watching, like, you know, a lot of other superhero movies, because um, their problems are just so much larger than life. You know, that it's hard to relate. Like, I, I well, just, that's that's know, another, so. that's a whole another like side of the spectrum. I know that I'm, I'm interested in getting into. I'm is like, like bigger than life. Yeah, so like Daredevil, Spider-Man, those might be better versions of She-Hulk concept done better. If you want like a more serious story or yeah. something that's yeah. actually going to move you, because She-Hulk, in my eyes, was never meant to move you. It was always just supposed to be this spectacle and a humorous thing, right? So, but anyway. And with that, uh, we're about to miss our stop. Uh, we gotta, we gotta jump out of this train quick, yeah. guys. Oh, it's coming. Oh boy. Uh, oh boy! Uh, you see us pulling into the Here station. Uh, hey, before we go, uh, make sure to uh, like our, the video if you're watching on YouTube. Subscribe to it. Tell your friends yeah, to subscribe ring, to ring it. Ring the bell. Uh, ring the bell. And if you're on Spotify, the bell. give us five star rating. Goes a long way. And you know, uh, it, and it, hey, yeah, like just tell a friend. Tell a friend about our podcast. Just tell one person. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Boom. She Hulk is is the best show or the worst show and tell them that we talk about it and yep you know. so, logan here oh, comes the train okay. we oh. gotta jump oh my gosh logan. here it goes oh. Oh my.